All right, well, uh, if you guys can see me and hear me, I'll just go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everybody. This is our Outlander Trading Cards Season 4 launch party. Uh, we are so, so excited to finally get this product out there. It has been over a year of work and so many people have been involved in this project from the beginning. Um, and when we finally push out a product and it goes live and we see people tearing open their boxes and talking about their favorite cards and all that stuff, it's, it's truly rewarding and it really reminds us why we do what we do. So thank you all so much for your patience, for sticking in there with us. Um, you know, it was delayed a week because we wanted to make sure that the collation and everything was correct going into this. Um, there's always going to be pack out issues with, with any product that we put out there. So we wanted to work out those kinks before uh, uh, we release it. As anxious as we were, um, we decided to do it right and, and wait a week and wait and, and do it the right way. So uh, thank you all for your patience. Uh, I know some people have opened up product already. I'm going to be doing that today uh, on this webinar. I have a box here of the season four trading card product. There it is in all its glory in case you, in case you haven't seen that already. Um, and we're going to be giving away every single card that I pull out of this box. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Zoom, the way to enter to win one of these cards is to go into the chat feature down below and ask us any question you want. Uh, it could be about this particular product, uh, like regarding the making of it. It could be about um, you know, why we made certain decisions, why we reached out to certain people to sign. Uh, you can ask us questions um, about the insertion ratios in case you're curious about how common certain cards are to find. Or you can ask us questions about uh, future releases, thinking forward to Outlander season five and beyond. Um, or maybe you just wanna give us a suggestion. So leave us a comment in the chat box and uh, Jamie is on this call with me and he's going to help facilitate those questions uh, as I'm opening up the packs and I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. Also, um, at the end of the call, I am going to basically list out the winners by number. Uh, it's gonna be very, very simple. Uh, and then I think we're going to have a total of about nine winners. So someone is going to get the full base set. Someone's going to get all of Chase 1, Chase 2, Chase 3, Chase 4, the variants, all of the playing cards, all of the autos and, and whatever wardrobes that we find. So very, very excited. Uh, let's go ahead and just dig into it. And uh, Jamie, let me know if you're having any, any issues with uh, your audio. No uh, issues. Your I have other issues, but they're not... Uh related to audio or the video at this point. All right. Well, feel free to uh, throw me any of those questions as they come in. And uh, I'll get started on getting these packs open. I thought I had my pair of scissors here. <laughs> there we go. So um, the exciting thing about this product is that there is a chance to get um, an autograph and a wardrobe card in every box, but we played around with the ratios this time and there's a chance to also get a second wardrobe card and that could be either a dual or a triple. So we're, we're, we got our fingers crossed that that'll happen in this box and if that's the case, then the winner will get two wardrobe cards. Uh, so I'm not gonna go through every single card, but I'll kind of fan them out like that. Uh, this is what our base set looks like. As you can see there. Um, looks like we got our first chase card here, the father daughter set. This was a really great uh, set to work on and one that was probably the number one most requested that I've seen from fans for this season. People love the relationship with uh, Jamie and Brianna. And so we decided to feature them together with all the quotes uh, that they say to each other. So it looks like we got uh, another base card and we got, oh, another chase card. There we go, from um, Chase 2, Fraser's Ridge, highlighting all of the amazing places on the Fraser homestead where they uh, set up, they slowly build their home throughout the duration of the season. And look at the card back. I think the designers did such an amazing job on these in incorporating sort of that woodland rustic look. Uh, and I'll actually show you the back of the father-daughter one as well. Just a great back-to-back -back pose, of father and daughter, great typography, everything. I think the designers really knocked it out of the park. And we got a third insert in this pack, a base variant. 
you can see that nice shine there. This is a gold foil variant. And you'll notice a difference between this season and previous seasons. Before we had a basic foil stamp, usually like in the top right corner of the card. This, for this set, the foil is really incorporated more organically into the frame. It's, it, it doesn't seem like an afterthought. It's something that is um, uh, built into the actual structure of the card frame, which I think is really, really cool. All right, so not, not bad for our first pack. Uh, we, got, we got three solid inserts and we'll, we'll keep going. So opening up pack number two, I'm not gonna show off all the base cards, but we did get three this time, which means there are two special inserts. Another father-daughter chase card. Very special. And that's from the moment that they went out hunting together. Uh, they hadn't really um, become buddy-buddy quite yet. It, was, it took a while for them to warm up to each other, but it was really special to see them uh, kindle their, their relationship and watch Jamie become a really great father. Uh, another variant that I pulled is the canvas stock variant. And it may not be super easy to see on this camera, but um, the canvas stock uh, is a base variant that is printed on a different type of stock. It's more of a rough texture. Uh, the closest thing I can compare it to is like old timey books or ledgers. Uh, it has that sort of rough quality, but this was received very well when we tried it out for Outlander season three. And we've decided to keep it around ever since uh, in lieu of foil board. Uh, so again, we're always looking for technologies that fit with the particular uh, property the best. And considering there is a lot of um, uh, printing and paperwork that is embedded in the story of Outlander, uh, the canvas stock cards, I think, really fits that nicely. So I'm just gonna separate the base cards. I opened up pack number three. Got some nice base cards right there. And that's from all of the episodes. We got some beautiful images to work with. And while I'm at it, I'll just show off the back of one of the base cards. So uh, like the previous season, there's an image on the front and the back. And we've moved, I don't think, you, I don't think that's showing up on the camera, but uh, we've moved towards using uh, quotes rather than flavor text. It's easier to get approved from the licensor. Um, and personally, I think it really brings you back to that episode and like places you into that point in time um, a little bit better because you, there's amazing quotes and the writing in the show is outstanding. So we wanted to highlight that especially. Uh, and then the special insert I got from pack number three is another Fraser's Ridge card. So this is uh, one of the earlier episodes, I think it was episode one of the season, uh, where they were surveying the land, talking about the American dream and planning a future for themselves. Hey, Dustin, two, mm -hmm. two points. Um, one, some people would like to see how you actually open the packs, Okay. what you're using. And then uh, some people are asking whether or not you can uh, watch the uh, how far away you're holding the cards because uh, you might be too close and it might be making them a little bit too blurry. So try to work on it. Well, uh, let's, let's test one now and we can all give thumbs up okay. whether or not you're doing it right. All right. <laughs> so let's see. Right. When does it start getting, it looks like it might it be gets, getting blurry It looks now. Get a little blurry right there. Maybe that's too far, too far. Somewhere right about there-ish, <laughs> Okay. There, the there, spot. everything there, good, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, I'll do that moving forward. Okay, so uh, the packs, uh, I, did, I wasn't showing off the packs, but this is what they look like. Um, beautiful foil uh, treatment on there. And people don't have to wear gloves okay. when they open the packs, right? <laughs> <laughs> they can if they want. Uh, it's, a, it's a choice. I'm doing this because these are going to be eventually, oh, you guys wanted to see how I'm opening them up. So I basically just pull this back tab until it pops open. Uh, and then I get this silver part and I kind of pull it away. Of course, the one that I demonstrate is taking a while to pull open. I didn't have my scissors with me, like I said I was going to this morning, so. Probably the gloves. Tricky. There we go. Yeah, it might be the gloves. So I just pop it open like that. And then I kind of tear this seam downwards like that. Make sure I'm not like ripping it open and damaging any of the cards. All right, so three more base cards. Thank you. 
<laughs> we're both working in the office today so jamie just literally ran over and dropped off a pair of scissors for me so thank you for that jamie <laughs> um three more base cards here doesn't look like they're that blurry so i'll keep pulling them at that distance another canvas card parallel of the base set and making neat little piles here so i can pick the winners very quickly at the end and this is the first one of these that we've gotten chase one characters this is sort of a mainstay in our outlander products uh, it's always important for us to highlight the main characters of the set especially if they go through uh, significant changes or character development. Myrta is extremely important for uh, season four, uh, being that he is basically a fugitive and at the end of the season has forced Jamie to actively work against him. So very important season uh, for him and on to season five as well. On the back of these cards, uh, there's beautiful type typography and a um, brief paragraph just talking about the character, the changes that they've gone through um, throughout season four and sort of just the highlights of, of what's going on uh, with them. So now I'll demonstrate how I open them up using the scissors, which will take a lot less time. So I'm, I'm making sure to cut towards the top just a little bit so I'm not damaging any of the cards. I rip that off and then I sort of pull this back panel like that. Boom. There we go. Much easier. Thank you, Jamie, for that assist. All right, we got another four base cards there. And something with the base cards that we try to do is feature as many characters as possible. Uh, there are times where we can't secure certain actors to sign for a particular set. And so if that is the case, we'd like to feature them a lot on our base cards. Um, the base card should tell the complete story of the season uh, without leaving out any major plot points. We also like to focus on the characters and give as many of them uh, some love as possible if they don't appear in, in the other components of the set. So the insert for that pack is another Fraser's Ridge uh, card. Dustin actually brings up a question a lot of people are having um, about how you know, the process of securing autograph cards and how we pick the talent and what that whole process is like. Yeah, so um, the process, it always starts with who is the most important to the show and who the fans are asking for the most. So in the case of Outlander, it's really a no-brainer. Sam Hewen, Katrina Balfe, uh, they are must-haves at this point. Um, without them, it feels really odd. It feels like there's a hole in the set that, um, um, that needs to be filled by somebody. So uh, not having them in the set is really bad. Um, but as far as everyone else, it's, it's sort of uh, a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, there are some actors that have signed many times for us before. Uh, and with the case of this product, we try to focus on brand new signers, bringing in the new talent um, and showing off autograph cards that people have not seen before in any set. Um, there are uh, main cast members that are fan favorites. Um, Ed Spaliers was, re was requested a lot. He did appear in CZX Outlander before, but since he's such a pivotal character in this season, uh, we knew how, we had to get him. So we put our ear to the ground and we listened to what the fans are telling us. And that's sort of our jumping off point. And then from there, it, it, it goes into like the nitty gritty of um, how much actors are asking for uh, to make their autograph deals, their availability, uh, the timeliness. You know, some actors aren't always available to sign, but um, the goal is to reach out as early as possible and um, secure those deals because we do know that it takes some time to ship out the cards and get them signed, especially with an international show like Outlander where we're shipping uh, to uh, Europe and Australia and all these other places. We like to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, we also like to make sure that we're finding uh, new signers each time so it continues to be exciting for collectors to get somebody new. So that's, that's a focus as well. And this particular set has a lot of that uh, to offer. Uh, there's a lot of signers who are appearing for the very, very first time. Um, and there's a lot of great guest talent. There, there's some actors that show up maybe on, only in a couple episodes, but they leave such an impression and they're in pivotal moments in the show. Uh, Sarah Lee MacArthur, for example, like she was in one episode, but her moment is so memorable and uh, crucial for the story that you know, we, we knew we had to secure her.
Also, also we like to reach out to people who have, you know, big social media followings, um, who, in, who go to shows, interact with their fans, people who are sort of like fan favorites, uh, big personalities that, that people like. Speaking of Ed Spilliers, there he is. He's got his own character's chase card for Stephen Bonnet. Very excited to have him involved with this project. All right. Okay, we got, ooh, okay, this pack is really exciting. The most exciting thing about it, for some people, the checklist card. You gotta have that to show you guys what there is to collect, to, to see if there's any holes in your collection. This is a part of the base set, one of the 72 cards. I like those, I've always liked checklist cards. Um, and the other major insert that we got, Melanie Gray. Yeah, she played uh, Governor Tryon's wife, uh, Margaret. Uh, she uh, appears uh, in season four, and then she also shows up in season five, where um, uh, she meets up with uh, Claire at a wedding. Uh, she's a very elegant, regal character, and uh, very excited to have her for this release. And also something that I should note is that she did inscriptions on several of her cards. Uh, she did kisses on that one. I think she did a number of different variants. Uh, that's something that we try to get all of our signers to do is to add inscriptions and personalizations to their autographs. And in fact, when we ship them out to the signers, we tape an example card on the box where I've added hearts and rainbows and all this stuff to just get it in their head that they can have fun with it and play around and uh, put some awesome inscriptions on there. So someone will be getting that autograph card by the end of this. Also, uh, one question, it's probably been asked already, but I will address it now, is that uh, this autograph card has a different frame than the uh, Sam and Katrina auto. Uh, the reason the Sam and Katrina and also Ed Spillier's auto is different is because they signed a long, long time ago. Actually, over a year ago, they signed for this set. And at that point, we didn't really have usable assets or uh, designs that we could give to the designers to create the cards. So we said, all right, let's make a generically designed card that still looks and feels like Outlander, but isn't specific to season four. We'll design that and we'll have them sign it. Uh, but we wanted to, once we had the assets, we wanted to make sure all of the other signers had something that was specific to season four. And so that's where this um, card frame comes from. And it's a little hard to see on the camera, but in the background there is a beautiful uh, panoramic shot of the wilderness. Uh, around the image of the character, there are branches and leaves kind of poking out. So being that season four is very uh, rustic and out in the wild, we wanted to bring out those components in the card frame. Uh, so that's why there's, a, there's a, a difference between the starstruck card frames that Sam, Katrina, and Ed Spillier signed and the normal uh, autograph card frames that everyone else signed. Also, something some, some people some people are asking about how many they're signing each one of the uh, Sam and Katrina, uh, and we can just tell you it's it's limited. Uh, there's enough for you to collect, but they're not in every box, obviously. Um, and there are the duels as well. There are less of the duels, and there are of the individual cards that they both signed. Yes. Yeah. When something isn't um, crash numbered, we don't typically give out the exact numbers for those, but they are limited. Um, and yeah, like Jamie said, the, the duels tend to be uh, rarer than the singles. So I, got, I just pulled a really huge hit. Guys, I want you all to see this. A triple wardrobe card. That is Sophie Skelton and Richard Rankin dancing at that Scottish festival. This is a beautiful card. Uh, so the, the, the swatch right here is of Brianna's skirt. This one here is from her jacket. And then this swatch is from Roger's kilt. Uh, it, it was, that is one of my favorite pieces of fabric that we got to use for the set was his kilt. Um, anytime we get kilts, it's like, that's, that's the bread and butter. We, we got to put that in the set somehow. And this is limited to one 150. Um, yeah, so this is, this is a major, major hit right here. So fingers crossed that we get another one. I think the fact that it's a triple is a good sign 
So whoever wins that will possibly have a chance at winning another one. All right. I don't know if we're approaching halfway or not. We're getting we're getting deep into the box now. Base cards. There are so many questions. I don't think that we'll have time filling up the the, the time. <laughs> I'm sure. Characters chase set card of Claire, and we got our first puzzle card. So you can expect to find about two, maybe three of these in your box and um, put them all together in a binder page and you will get the full uh, key art image of Jamie and Claire standing on the cliff. But something else that's sort of a nice little surprise is when you put it into the binder page and you turn the page around, there's another puzzle on the back side. It's, it's more of a subdued uh, color palette, but you, you'll be able to see it when you have all nine cards and it's Roger and Brianna right before their hand fast and they're sort of embracing. And so it's a, it's a double-sided puzzle. And I know a lot of people were fans of that uh, when we did that for season three, uh, sort of having two puzzles in one. So we definitely wanted to do that for this set as well. Oh, all right, two in a row. We got another puzzle card there. Looks like part of Jamie's leg. So we'll be giving those away as well. Someone will be getting, walking away with the puzzle cards today. Beautiful card there, Lord John Gray. And more base cards. So we should, once this box is completely open, we should have a full base set and um, uh, full chase sets of chase one through three. Not the puzzle set, but um, the other three should be completed as well. Speaking uh of the puzzle set. Got a Dustin, a question that's coming up a few times is, what is your favorite card from season four? My favorite card from season four, hands down, is the quadruple wardrobe card. Um, anytime we up the ante, uh, especially when it comes to wardrobe, which is so, so crucial for Outlander and what our fans want and what they're expecting, uh, I'm a big fan of that. So um, I, it's, it's got to be that quadruple wardrobe card. It's, it's, it's the first time we've done that with Outlander. And the fact that it is Jamie, Claire, and uh, uh, John Bell on the same card is amazing. Uh, it's like the Fraser family unit together. And anytime we get those units together, it's really, really, really special. And also something I love about that card is that it is uh, a single photo. So that's something else that I don't know if we talk about a lot is the photo selection. There, there is um, a certain number of photos we have to work with. Sometimes we have to get creative and kind of stretch the usage of them. But for that particular card, um, all of those wardrobe swatches were represented in that single photo. So we didn't have to do like a split screen on the card. Um, we didn't have to, you know, put lines, you know, separating all the characters. They were all together. And, and, and that, that is just like, chef's kiss like that from a product development standpoint anytime we we can simplify the art of the card while also make it truly special is is really really cool so it's, it's yeah it's got to be that quadruple wardrobe card you and it's number to it's number to 25 so that's a question that's coming up a lot yeah numbered out of 25 and it's so. the only quadruple card in the set so it's a definite chase We got canvas card and Brianna character card. Something I haven't brought up yet are the playing cards. Uh, there is a playing card pack in here. I see it peeking at me from the bottom of the box. Someone will be walking away with a full uh, suit, whatever suit we pull. I don't know. I don't know that yet, but someone will be winning that as a prize too. Uh, it's a bonus foil pack that is introduced in this set. It's a fully playable uh, set of playing cards. And every box is going to get one full suit, whether it's the hearts, the diamonds, uh, the spades, or the clubs. They're also going to get a joker card, and they're going to get a foil variant of one of those cards um, in that suit. So on average, since, th since they are one suit per box, on average, if you were to get four boxes, they were consecutive, you would have a very good chance of completing that set. 
and you know you can stick them in a binder you can play them uh however however you want to you want to treat them but they they are playable and they are collectible and i think um probably one of the more uh, uh exciting new additions to this set some people are asking how where that idea came from as far as the playing cards and that one uh I guess I could take credit for. I was uh, it just I kept hearing about blackjack, blackjack, and so I was thinking that there's clearly a, a king and a queen in the Outlander uh, um, community, and then blackjack, and it just somehow it just hit me that we should be doing playing cards, uh, and we were, we replaced star power because uh, you all really didn't like those that much anyway, so we felt that we would put that towards a, a bonus pack of playing cards. And just having that initial idea and then having all the suits uh, and who the different characters were for those suits and then how we would come up with who the Joker was. And it was fun. It was really good. Um, I just had the initial idea and Dustin really took it from there and, and uh, made sure that all the characters were the right characters in the right spots. And, uh, and then, you know, making sure that there'd be a, num uh, a different pack. The design, the pack design is beautiful. The card designs are beautiful. And then we wanted to add the chase. So the one extra foil card. Uh, so people would actually you know, have some additional uh, chase for that and, and create some more fun uh, and value within that, that extra free pack that's in there. Uh, so it, it should be exciting for everybody. Uh, we're seeing that people are asking whether or not we're creating a special box for those. Uh, as of right now, we're not creating something, but we are working on creating a, a different version of cards potentially uh, that would just come in a playing deck. So if you don't want to play with these, at all and you just want to collect them that's a good idea um but or if you want to play with them you can i probably wouldn't play with the foil ones though uh, that'd be a high stakes game um, <laughs> but you can uh play with the other ones but we are looking at uh creating a different version that will be boxed uh and sold at, at a really reasonable price point uh in the future probably around holiday so that's what we're working on as well since we've seen how much people love uh, the, the playing cards so far, but we will make them different. So they're not going to be the same as what you're collecting here. They'll probably be on a, on a different stock even, uh, well, they will be on a different stock. So they're even more playable. So that's hopefully all the answer questions you have to that, but we, uh, um, uh, look forward to your feedback on whether or not you'd be interested in that extra box, uh, down the road. Uh, but, uh, overall we're excited to have to have done that. It's uh, it's unique. Yeah, like I said, we're always trying to up the ante with every new release and, and try to give you guys something completely unexpected um, or improve upon uh, what, you, what you all already love. So we're always listening to you guys. You know, if there is any suggestions that you have for future chase sets or inserts that you have, we are all ears. Like I said before, the starting point for us a lot of the times is listening to you. That's why we're so active on the Facebook fan pages. Uh, it's because we get a lot of our suggestions from there um, because that's the only way that we can make a compelling product is knowing what our collectors expect and by also watching the show ourselves and becoming fans of the show ourselves we're able to know like what moments and what things we absolutely need to include Ooh, um, i see one i see one right now about an autograph someone wanted a rollo paw print autograph and <laughs> as a, a sore a sore point for us because we actually tried to have that happen and we were rejected <laughs> unfortunately oh, yeah. we had the card designed had uh, approval initially and then a decision was made that we shouldn't do that and it wasn't from us so we um, really wanted to make it happen everybody we, we thought it would be the cutest darn thing you ever saw <laughs> um yeah we, we and, that, and that was the suggestion that we heard a lot uh a, a lot about was getting uh rollo involved in some way he's He's a small part in the show, but you know, he's a fan favorite. He's, he's an adorable dog. So yeah, that, that one kind of stung not being able to include him, but he is featured uh, as a Joker card. So he's in the set. He's part of the playing card deck that you can collect. So we still have Rolo represented. Okay. So a couple packs ago, because we were in the middle of talking, I pulled a bonus wardrobe card. So like I said before, there's a chance to get multiple wardrobe cards in a single box. And I managed to pull one. Natalie Simpson as Phaedra. That is a piece of our fabric from her uh, headscarf that she wears. And this is numbered out of 99. She's also a signer in the set. 
So, you, you know, there's a, there is a chase to get her signature and this card. So there you have it, two wardrobe cards. Whoever wins, whoever's number I pull, they're gonna get both of those. So every other box on average, you can expect to get a bonus hit. And that is really, really exciting. All right, we're down to the last two regular packs and then I'm gonna bust open the playing card pack and show you what I pull from there. All right, base cards. Those are the two inserts, Father and Daughter and Fraser's Ridge. All right, last pack of regular playing cards, sorry, trading cards. And it looks like we got the diamonds for our playing card pack. And I, I, will, I will open that up up here so you guys can all see what the pack looks like. It's a really beautiful design. Four base cards. That's the image that's used on that quadruple wardrobe I was talking about. Again, it's a really compelling image and it has all three of them on it. So one of my favorites from the set. And it looks like we completed our character chase set with Roger. Okay, so uh, when you open up your box, you will see that there is some room cut out in the styrofoam insert uh, where we've inserted the playing card. And it is a thicker pack because there are more cards in it, but it looks a little something like that. I think even just from a, an aesthetic standpoint, it's really, really special. Uh, I think every box will feel uh, really special when you open it up and see one of these. Um, every single foil pack is different. So the star, uh, or excuse me, the diamond, the heart, the spade, and the club all have different designs. Uh, and it will either be red or blue on the front. So let's open this up and I'll show you how we break down the suit, all of the ranks, the jokers, and we'll see which foil variant we get. So you'll see that we have all of the cards in this particular suit, all of the diamonds, and we wanted to feature characters that were most important to the series. And we didn't limit ourselves to season four. This is sort of a celebration of seasons one through four. So you'll see Fergus, for example, on another suit, there is a, there is a version of him where he's the child where he hasn't grown up yet. So there, we, we try to span all four seasons of the show uh, with these cards to make it more neutral, more of a celebration of the entire series. So I don't think there's any surprises so far as far as which characters we're choosing to include. Like Jamie said, it was an absolute no brainer to have Black Jack Randall represented as the Jack. I mean, come on, it's, it's just, it writes itself. Of course, the queen is Claire and Jamie is the king. We got Frank representing the ace. And there he is, Rolo, he is the joker. Now every single pack is gonna have a joker card, but there are two different joker cards to collect. There is a red version and a blue version. And depending on which suit that you get in your box, um, that you will get that particular color. So there's two to chase. And the foil variant is of Frank Randall, the ace. It's got a beautiful shine on it. Um, again, the foil is embedded and baked into the design of the card frame. It's not a simple stamp. It is the full frame embedded with gorgeous gold foil. People would like to see the back too. There you go. There you go. So we didn't specify which season it was. Again, it's very neutral, Outlander trading cards. And if we were do, uh, to do a standalone um, playing card deck at some point, we would like to alter the back in some way, change up the design, uh, keep it looking fresh and all that. So that's, that's something that we're currently discussing at the moment. So, so far that's been over, people love that idea as well, so having this extra card. All right, so I've made neat little piles of all of the base cards and the inserts and the hits. 
Um, so what I was planning on doing was just listing off numbers. So if I were to list number one, for example, the first person who um, asked a question in the chat box would get um, a particular prize. So I'm gonna make it nice and easy for us to track down the winners. Uh, hold, uh, why don't you uh, tell me the what the tell me what the numbers are, okay. so that I can make sure that I can count it because I'm gonna have to scroll back pretty far and everyone will be waiting a little bit. So okay. Uh, so okay. Um, so no, all right. So it's it's nice and simple. It's just one through nine. So number one is going to win the wardrobe card. So whoever was the very first person to ask a question in the chat box, we'll get both of those. Number one. The anticipation is real. We need a drum roll sound effect or something. <laughs> These comments are cracking me up in the chat box. <laughs> All right, while we're waiting for that, let me see if there's any other questions that I can answer for you guys. It's a lot of anticipation. Thank you, everybody. The, the issue is every time someone sends a, a chat, it pushes mine all the way down to the bottom. So I have to keep scrolling <laughs> oh, back no. up. So <laughs> hold on. <laughs> so, so maybe you can just get one through nine, Jamie, and then I'll tell you what each of the people has won, if that works for you. Let's see. Fair, fair enough. So keep talking, and I'll just tell you what those, those <laughs> nine people are. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, again, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you're just now joining us, thank you so much. Uh, this was a product that was over a year in development. Uh, like I said, we got we started securing autograph cards over a year ago. So uh, that, that's just the usual timeline for a set like this. So with all of the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into it, when it finally comes out, it's, it's such a rewarding experience. It reminds us why we create trading cards, why we're passionate about these properties. Um, and just seeing everyone's reactions and their excitement means the world to us. So thank you so much for, for sticking in there, uh, for being patient with us on this release. Uh, and we're already thinking forward to the future. We're already weighing our options as far as what new Outlander products we wanna make. We definitely wanna make more. We don't want to um, wait till a new season comes out and just make one product. We want to be creative and you know, have multiple releases coming out per year. That would be the dream for us. Um, so yeah, right now we are sort of mapping out what a season five set could look like. We're working with Sony to get some beautiful uh, wardrobe pieces that we can use. So still very much in the early stages um, and it'll take some time to secure that. But um, you know, we are active on all of the Facebook fan group pages. Uh, you can reach us through email. You can reach us through direct messages. Uh, let us know what you want to see from up, uh, upcoming Outlander sets. Uh, let us know which actors we uh, should include for season five. Let us know what moments we should focus on. I've watched all of season five, um, rewatched a couple of the episodes to make sure that um, I am fully invested in the show, that I know what the key moments are. But what resonated with me is going to be different for everyone else. So let your voice be heard and let us know uh, what you want to see because that will improve our products at the end of the day. To give you guys a visual of uh, the cards that I pulled, that is all, those are all of the base cards. So I think it's safe to say that that is a full base set that you can win. Um, and yeah, I got piles for all of the other different inserts. So that is awesome. Oops. Who decides on the colors for the fabrics? That is a question that I just pop up, saw pop up. Um, we basically come up with a wish list of all of the fabric that we want, and we send that to Sony and say, hey, what from this can you provide us? 
Uh, and it's and when we put together that wish list, we try to have a variety of different colors um, as well as different fabrics. This set is really interesting because it's got corduroy, it's got like fake wool, it's got like um, suits like polyester, it's got silk, it's got all sorts of different things. Um, so there is a, there is a uh, an aesthetic difference to each of the cards as well as the colors. We got a lot of beautiful vibrant reds and blues um, from the uh, indigenous actors that participated in the set. Um, so we try to mix it up and try to have a, a wide array of, of things from the licensor. Now, whatever we get back, it's, it's always going to be a toss up. You know, sometimes we'll get exactly what we're looking for. Um, but other times, you know, there'll be something that we really want that they don't necessarily have available. So we'll have to pivot and get a little creative. Um, but at the end of the day, they only give us what we ask for. So it's important for us to cast a wide net and, and, and try to get as many things as possible. So that's, that's sort of my job early on in, in the process is ask for every single thing under the sun to try to get it for the set. Um, on the subject of wardrobe cards, someone, Martha is asking, do you get swatches of fabric? Uh, no, we get full um, pieces of fabric used to create the costumes from the show. They are not cut yet. And the cutting portion is, is what we do because we don't use all of the fabric that we get. A lot of it, um, uh, you know, we try to use all of it or most of it, but we don't use all. Uh, at the end of the day, we try to get creative with the quantities. Um, some things we will we like to have short printed, um, and so we hold back uh, some fabric. Other cards we like to make more abundant, so we like playing with those different rarities and having tiers of uh, of rarity within the set. So that that all comes down to how we cut it and what quantities we want. So uh, I just got from Jamie a list of the winners right here. Like I said before, it's one through nine. So. Winner number one is the, is the first person who left a question in the chat box. And that is Christine Gordon. Congratulations, you won the wardrobe cards for the set. That is very exciting, especially because you get two of them. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to read your handwriting, Jamie. Uh, it looks like Aaron Moffitt is number two. Aaron is winning the autograph card from Melanie Gray. Congratulations. So let me just keep track of this so I can have these all shipped out to everybody today. Number three uh, is winning the suit of playing cards. Everything that we pulled from the playing card pack. And that is Marsha H. Marsha H. I will have Jamie confirm exactly who that is, but Marsha, you won the playing cards. I should have been a doctor. I could write prescriptions. Sorry, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Exactly. I was writing down as fast as I could. I apologize. I'll, no, I'll come thank thank sure. you for doing that, Jamie. Uh, number four is going to be winning the variants. And when I say variants, I mean the gold foil cards, all of those, and the canvas stock cards. So you're getting all of that stuff. So number four. Winning the variant cards is Kim Harris. Congratulations, Kim. All right. Number five is going to be winning the entire father and daughter uh, chase set. That is chase three. And the winner selected for that is Sasanek 5252. Um... I don't know who that is. You can hit us up on Facebook. You can send me an email uh, letting us know who you are. Just be sure to identify yourself and give us your address and we'll send out um, your prize to you. Okay, number six is winning the Fraser's Ridge Chase Set. And that is Connie W. I, I really wish I could read that, but we'll, we'll figure out who you are. Connie W is winning the Fraser's Ridge Chase Set. Number seven is winning the Characters Chase Set. And number seven is Donna G-O-D-D, -D, is it Gaudi? Donna 
Donna, congratulations on winning the Characters Chase set. All right, number, uh, number eight, this is a pretty big one. Number eight is getting this full base set. All right, number eight is, I don't see a last name on here, but I can always verify that with Jamie. Christine, congratulations, Christine. You have won a full Outlander season four trading card base set. And the last slot that we have is for the puzzle set. As a reminder, we pulled three of them in our box, which is actually pretty good. On average, you can expect mostly two. So we got pretty lucky in our box. The person who's winning that is number nine. And number nine is Brenda. Congratulations, Brenda. And those are our winners. So we will go back through the list and make sure we have everybody's name correct. Uh, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook. Send us, uh, send us a message and say, hey, I won this uh, from the Zoom giveaway. You can reach me uh, through my email, which is dustin.porras, P-O-R-R-A-S, at cryptozoic.com. Identify yourself, and we'll try to get these out in the mail uh, as early as today if you are quick in getting back to us. So congrats to the winners. It's all going out to you, hopefully, today. And thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, again, we really appreciate your support. Dustin, a big question before we sign off uh, that's mm -hmm. coming up is uh, the uh, oversized cards and what might be coming down the road in the future on those. So yes. people are so asking it's, that question. It's already kind of made its rounds in the Facebook fan pages. We're, we are waiting to make sort of an official announcement with all the details in the, in the, in the next week or so. Um, but Den of Geek, uh, published an article about uh, an opportunity to get exclusive oversized wardrobe cards on eBay. Um, so there, we are working with eBay to have um, more opportunities available, available to get oversized wardrobe cards. Um, they're going to be completely exclusive to this eBay opportunity. Exactly what they are and what they'll be limited to and the prices are to be determined right now. But like I said, we're going to have uh, an announcement later down the line. But the, the, the entire idea uh, came from um, the pandemic situation that we're in. Uh, you know, we are no longer to, uh, allowed to attend um, any events that we normally would distribute exclusive cards. And so we've had to move all of our uh, services to online. Uh, and there in and of itself, it had a lot of technical difficulties, people not being able to check out with items, uh, international customers not being able to purchase items, a lot of different things like that. At the end of the day, it just wasn't fair for a lot of our fans. We got a lot of helpful, constructive feedback with regard to the online sales. And so what we are hoping to accomplish with eBay is to have it be more fair and to allow exclusive cards to be distributed, not just in the US, but worldwide. So a lot of fans in Australia, a lot of fans in Scotland, in England. So we want to make these cards available as possible. Um, also, we don't anticipate there being uh, the technical challenges that we've had selling things off of our website. eBay is a respectable platform. They uh, conduct thousands and thousands of sales, you know, every minute. And so using this platform, I think will be a lot more reliable. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, we're going to have, you know, as we introduced with um, the OS01 oversized wardrobe card, these cards are going to be larger. They're going to have bigger swatches. We're really, really excited about this opportunity. Um, but again, the exact details are to be determined, and we will make an official announcement at a later date. So stay tuned for that. I think that was well done. Hopefully everyone's excited about that, especially getting them out to other parts of the world that could not get them. Uh, this should allow people to, to have a great chance of getting them. Yeah. So we'll be making an, uh, an official announcement um, from the Cryptozo Cryptozoic uh, social media accounts, but I'll be sure to share that as well on uh, all of the Outlander fan group pages. So everyone can stay in the loop and know where and when and what is going on. But it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, we hope to have it up and running by the end of this month. So keep your, keep your eyes peeled for that. Yeah, the winners were selected from Zoom and not from Facebook. Oh, okay. so sorry, we didn't make that clear to everybody. There are a couple couple questions about that right now. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's it. Uh, 
we can uh, definitely have, uh, and it was also from the chat, not from the QA. So um, we'll be more clear about that in the future. And um, if you have any other questions, uh, hit us up on the Facebook groups or via email, Dustin gave you his. Um, we're happy to uh, answer any questions you have. Um, we will note that we did get someone saying they did not get every card in their suit. They got a double at one point. So please uh, be aware of that. So when you open your packs, um, we haven't seen that as being a widespread problem, but one person did report that. So they got two aces and didn't get a 10, for, for example, but they were all of the same suit. Uh, every pack is still getting the Joker and getting the, uh, the, the foil variant, but there is a chance that uh, that has happened. Uh, we, we're not seeing that very often, but they're, you know, in a production run, things happen. Uh, sometimes ratios don't exactly hit. Um, and it's an imperfect process, unfortunately. So uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, not have very many of those. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but please keep us informed if you find anything. Uh, yeah, again, we, we, we always have customer service quantities at our office and for something like that, that's an easy replacement for us to issue. So feel free to submit a ticket to us or you know, just reach out to me on Facebook. And if it's that simple, just sending a replacement card, I can do that very quickly, so. Reach out yep. to us if there's any issues. Yep, and so we sincerely appreciate all of your support, feedback, and, and engagement. Uh, it's kind of like an interesting uh, relationship. Sometimes you're mad at us. Sometimes it feels like we're mad at you, but we're really not. We're trying to just do the best we can to help you uh, stoke your collections. And, and uh, we're very proud of, of, of what we've been able to build with all of you, and, and it's really exciting for us. So. Uh, uh, it's it's our pleasure to to be a part of this collecting journey with you. So um, as you can see, Dustin's a, a a great representation of of Outlander community. He loves the show. He loves the products that he builds, and uh, and he's he's a great guy. So uh, um, thank you very much. <laughs> probably have to thank give him a raise. I probably have to give him a raise now. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much.